Hello and welcome to Only Connect. And I was shocked to be accused myself this week of a crime. I tweeted something about Morgan's Hardware Centre in Cardiff and apparently it contravened the BBC's rules on endorsement. I'm so angry. I've done nothing wrong. Crime? The only crime here is the low, low prices at Morgan's Hardware Centre in Cardiff. But I don't care. Charge me if you want. Mm? I promise you won't be charging as little as Morgan's Hardware Centre in Cardiff does for its impressive range of glues and adhesives. Still, do your worst. Put me in prison. I'll probably escape anyway. Unless, of course, the cell bars were put in using cement sealant from Morgan's Hardware Centre in Cardiff, which comes with a lifetime guarantee. And I'm fairly guaranteed to lose my job if I don't get on with it. So, pressing on. On my right. Niall Jones. An English graduate who once slept in a homemade raft on the Thames. Lorna Frankel, a natural sciences student who won a poetry competition at a scarecrow festival. And their captain, Steve Barnes, a science teacher who's able to move both eyes independently of each other. United by a soft spot for strolling, they are the Ramblers. Now, Steve, you won your first heat against the Wool Gatherers. It was quite a close game. What happened? So we were neck and neck going into the missing valves, and then we were just able to edge it at the very end there. This evening you are playing on my left. Claire Turner, a technical deployment consultant who has had spoons brandished at her by Sylvester McCoy. Jonathan Cairns, a biostatistician who has run into a fence on national television. And their captain, Tim Brown, a database administrator who spent a month living in a barn while trying to make a geological map of the Isle of Skye. All data science workers, they are the data wizards. You also won your match outright. You were against the Godin family. And if you win the first match, you jump straight through to much later in the competition. So it's been quite a while. Are you rusty or have you been quizzing in the gap? We've been doing a bit of quizzing in the gap. Um, these two have been trying to teach me how to do cryptic crosswords. It's just not gone well. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think when you see the word flower? That's Better. right, it's not flower, it's flower, a oh, river. Yeah, of course. When you read the word flower in yeah. your head as flower, you know you're doing too many crosswords. <laughs> Well, you've tossed a coin. Data Wizards, you won that toss. You'll be going first. So please choose an Egyptian hieroglyph. Um, Horned Viper, please. OK. What is the connection between these apparently random clues? Here's the first. Belarus, Wells, country. Next, please. What types of bird? Get another. Yeah, I mean, they're black and white and they're in Antarctica. Yes. Yeah. Um, next, please. That's yes. white only. It's a little flower from Switzerland. Yeah, there's a song, song about, about it. it. Um, I'm just get another. Uh, yeah, next, please. All white. They're all white something. Yeah. They're all white something. Yeah. They're all white something. Their names derive from white. Tell me more about the clues. Uh, I actually looked this up earlier today, and Belarus is white Russia. Um, Edelweiss is a white flower, Sauvignon Blanc, white wine, and I don't know which part of a penguin is white. It, it would be Gwyn in Welsh right. is white, and Pen is head, so the white-headed bird, and that was because Welsh sailors in Newfoundland saw, well, great orcs to begin with were described as white-headed birds, and then perhaps at some point got confused with penguins. Uh, you know, I mean, let's not assume the Welsh sailors had had a drink, but the, the great orcs and the penguins were confused, and the name came from that. Their names all mean white something. Well done. Ramblers, what would you like? Uh, can we go for the lion, please? Yes, you can. It's the music question. Do you still want it? Yeah. 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 Great. Like it. <laughs> Here comes your first clue. Next clue, please. Next clue, please. Oh, oh that's around the rack. Yeah, well, it goes on film. Yeah, it goes on film. So we'll go for another, because we don't have any Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, next clue, please. Do you know what this is? No, I think we guess it in girls or films. Or films? Or unless Duran Duran is from something. Oh, right. that's right. What do we go for? Uh, film? Film. Uh, film. Is the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> and which clue are you applying that random guess to? We recognised Girls on Film yeah. by Duran Duran, and unfortunately we didn't recognise anything else. The first one, David Bowie, Drive-In Saturday. Uh -huh. Second haunting one, 
Ennio Morricone's theme from Cinema Paradiso. Oh, okay. And the last one, Saturday Night at the Movies, The Drifters. I bet you would know it if we got to the chorus. But, uh, but then we'd have told you the answer, so that would just be, that'd be silly. <laughs> Data Wizards, what would you like next? Two reads, please. Two reads. These are going to be picture clues. What do they have in common? Here's the first. Uh, some kind of fish. Yeah, do you recognise it? Is it red? Slightly. No, you make a colour yeah. thing. Uh, next, please. Oh, that's an integration. Uh, it's not a poisson or something, is it? No, well, it's, it's any... That's... Where's the, the fundamental theorem of calculus that says that differentiation and integration are the opposites? Is it named after anything? Oh, I can't... Uh, next, please. Going. Owl. That's no owl. Oh, yeah. Um, next. I think Jonathan has an answer. No. Well, I don't know if I've got an answer. <laughs> right. um, I, I, they're all definite. Not, I think, all definite. Rambus, do you know for a bonus? Uh, distributions? No. <laughs> Which clues do you recognise? I think I've made it quite clear. Very few of them. One's an owl. <laughs> I think it's a snowy owl. It might it not be. A, yeah. It's a snowy owl. OK. Who's in the last clue? Uh, John Thompson. Emma yes. Thompson. Yes. So we've got Snowy, Thompson oh, and Thompson. Tintin. Oh, Tintin. We've got some calculus at clue two. Oh, right. And Haddock at the beginning. Oh, Captain course. Haddock. Characters from Tintin. Ramblers, what would you like next? Uh, can we have the twisted flax, please? Yes, you could. What is the connection here? Time starts now. Next clue, please. Uh, next, yeah. please. What's that? Is that U, U, U in French? I don't know. Tight lines. There's another one. Yeah. Uh, last one, please. That's a uh, rude word in French. Yeah, but what are the others? Oh. I read it first with Sacre Bleu, so they're, oh, they're French. French um, oh, OK. Yeah. Go for it, Lorna. Go for it. Are they French, like, expressions of... Displeasure. Surprise, shock, or displeasure? <laughs> they are not <laughs> French expressions of surprise, shock, or displeasure. Data Wizards, bonus chance for you. Are they expressions that you say to someone instead of good luck? They are expressions of good luck. Yeah. Which clues do you know? Merde. <laughs> <laughs> and when would you say that? Uh, in the theatre. I You'd thought. say that before ballet, and oh. the idea is a very old one because mailed it suggests if people are coming by horse and carriage to see the ballet, it's a full house because there's so much mailed, as it were, in the street. Mm. Toi, toi, toi. It's not French. It's actually, it's, it is a German thing. It's to be toi, toi, toi. Mm. And it's, a, 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 it's meant to sound like spitting, and that's opera performers, mm. and it's, uh, it's to ward off the evil spirits. You spit. Clear skies. Who would say good luck? Pilots in that way? or sailors. Well, it's actually stargazers oh, and astronomers, yeah. oh, say uh, Clear Skies. Yeah, and tight lines? Just... I thought that was circus. It's not. A fisherman. <laughs> oh. Okay. A, a fisherman and anglers would say tight lines. Well done. And what would you like for your own question? Um, water, please. Water. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Points in Eurovision that we didn't get? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh, next, please. Cities they have doing it. Uh, next, please. Uh, average people per GP. No, GP's per Next, company. please. Oh, companies, per, companies per capita. Should we do that? No, that can what be per capita? Right. Well, it's what like population density. Density. Yeah, we guess, because it's you're going to do it. Go to yeah. um, population density. It is population density. Oh, yeah. Absolutely right. And do you know what area it relates to? Per square kilometre. It is per square kilometre. So in Mongolia, you get just over two people per square kilometre, and in Monaco, 18,960. <laughs> Although I think in Monaco, none of them actually live there. I mean, I think that's the number that's officially registered yeah. there, but uh, I'm not sure they're all living there. Population density per square kilometre, well done. Ramblers, uh, there's one question left. The Eye of Horus, that's for you. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. And a plane, anything? No. Okay. Okay. Next clue, please. Gosh. Gosh. 
things. They get to test like AC and DC. Next, please, please. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, is this a TV series? Maybe. Yeah, I take it on. No uh, next clue, please. What's that? I've no idea. So, is it because he's playing someone? Uh, I don't know who that is. What do you want to go for? Uh, things that an actor has yeah, done. Yeah. Do you want me a particular... anyone? Uh, uh, Hugh Laurie. <laughs> things that Hugh Laurie has done... <laughs> on TV. On television. <laughs> In character. In character. It all sounds like a magnificent <laughs> series of performances, but no, they're not things that Hugh Laurie has done. Data Wizards, do you know? I think these um, subjects of Darren Brown um, TV performances, the make a member of the public do these things. They are things that the illusionist Darren Brown has persuaded people to do. I saw the land of plane, was a, a chap called Matt Galley. And uh, apparently he was a very nervous person and very nervous of flying and they built up his confidence and then the plane got into difficulty and he landed it. Uh, although it turned out he was just in a flight simulator. Electrocute a cat. This was trick or treat. And uh, Darren Brown <laughs> offered a woman called Lauren £500 if she could stop herself pressing a button to electrocute a cat. Which begs the question... Who needs to be offered money not to electrocute a cat? I mean, it, it, it seems weird, the extra motivation. But anyway, despite the money, uh, she still did press the button, although obviously the cat, it wasn't really wired up, and it didn't really have to do it, and uh, assassinate Stephen Fry. That was the assassin broadcast in 2011. All Darren Brown TV spectaculars. That means at the end of round one, the Ramblers have one point, the Data Wizards have four. <laughs> round two, what happens if you press a button to electrocute a cat? Well, nothing in that instance. Sequences is what we're talking about. Data Wizards, you'll be going first. What would you like? Uh, Horned Viper again, please. OK. What would come forth in this series? Here's the first. Next, please. I don't know. Is it? I don't know. I was going to say, is it letters thing? But no, it is. It feels like it should be something like that. Next, please. I think it's going to be more than one shot. What's the link between the numbers as well? What should the next number be? I don't know. So that's going up 23. They're going up by 22 each time. So 78. 28, 78, something. Uh, <laughs> 78 at 78, flowers. <laughs> I think you mean flowers, and that's uh, <laughs> not an acceptable answer for the sequence. Ramblers, have you got a suggestion? Um, 78 at 78, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Would not be right. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> but had you somehow come up with the word dog's night, it would have been correct. It's not about 12, 34 and so on, it's 1-2. One, 1-2 two. One, two at 1-2, one, a, B, the oh. first letter of the alphabet and the second letter of the alphabet appear in positions one and two of abstemiousness. Oh. Three and four, C, D, are at positions three and four of McDougal. Five, six, E, F, and I want seven, eight at seven, eight, something where the letters G, H appear in seventh and eighth positions. For example, Moonlight. What would you like for your own question, Ramblers? Let's go for the twisted flax, please. OK. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. He hates, he hates me. me. Do we know what that is? Uh, no, no shall I go? I'll tell you what it is. It's what? the opposite of she loves you. Which I think is okay, the first, first, but doesn't remember. Next, please. Yeah. yeah. So, so what's the... So what's the sequence? It's going to be Beatles songs. I don't know if... Uh, going back to the first one, what's the first one? Please, 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 is that the first one? Or is it I'm going to hold your hand? I think we've got to go for another one. Yeah. Uh, next, please. Yeah, yeah okay. so, so it's... Be, I, you, I don't... You don't, you don't want, want to, hold, to want let go, to go of go your foot. foot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You don't want to let go of your foot. <laughs> I'm afraid that is not the answer. But I look forward to coming back and discussing it in a moment. Data Wizards, do you know? Go, go away. <laughs> it's not the answer either. I think you know what the sequence is and I think you knew it at clue one. What's going on? They're the opposites of Beatles songs. Yeah. These are the opposites. We are changing oh, every word into its opposite in the titles of the Beatles' first four singles, going backwards don't? towards their first release, which was... Love Me Do, so it's Hate You Don't. Oh. Hate You Don't. 
And what were you constructing? I want to hold your hand. <laughs> I see. Yes, unlucky, because you got the sequence and you worked out what was happening, but we wanted the opposite of Love Me Do. Never mind. Data Wizards, what would you like? Uh, water, please. Water. That would come forth in this series of pictures. Here's the first. Got the rest of Venus. Venus. Next, please. So, could this be uh, Earth, Mars, Venus, Earth, Mars? Uh, Jupiter? Yeah. Next, please. Another? That's the Ambassadors by Holbein, uh, but there's, there's a skull the, that's been cut out. The artists or anything. Oh, it's it's H.H. Bobber, Botticelli. Oh, um, Henry. Oh, um, Henry. 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 Go on, talk about it. I was wondering if it's like Thomas the Tank Engine, it's like Henry's third. I don't know. No, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, just pick that. Who's number four? Jupiter and I. Just go Jupiter and I. Try that. Jupiter. Go. What do you mean exactly? The painting Jupiter and Io. I was going to punt. The it's painting right. Jupiter and Io would not be an answer, I'm afraid. Ramblers, do you want to have a go? Sunday afternoon on the island of La Grande Jatte. And why would that be? Because it's very big. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a painting. It's a very good painting. Now, not the right answer, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> this is only to do with the number of people yeah. in the painting. Oh, man. So, in The Birth of Venus, we have four characters. We've got Zephyr the Wind God, a nymph, a goddess, and Venus herself, of course. Next one, Susanna and the Elders. That's three people. That depicts the Bible story where Susanna is blackmailed by two elders for nefarious purposes, sort of early Me Too in the Bible. The Ambassador's Holbein, two figures. So, I just need a painting with one person in it. We went with the Mona Lisa. Now, where you're unlucky over there is that you see, you said Jupiter. And I asked what you meant, because if you said, well, this morning I drew Jupiter, I was so nervous about coming on the show, I was just doodling, and I found it was a picture of Jupiter, I'd have given you the point. But you named the painting Jupiter and Io, and if we look at that painting, it is mainly Io, but the smoky figure of Jupiter is there, meaning it's a, a depiction of two characters. So it would have come at clue three. So no points there. Ramblers, what would you like? Can we go for the lion, please? Yes, you may. What would come forth in this sequence? Is the first. Do you know what that is? No. It's a canal missing. Okay, okay. Uh, next, please. Do you, know, do you recognize that word? I've not heard of that. It's I think it's a place. Do you know what it is? No, we have like thingies through the W's or something. How many? Two, but I don't know. I think we'll we need to go for them. Next, clue, please. Mark. Do you know what that is? No. I mean, marked just means mark it in German, but I don't know what the L on the end might mean. Is that the Grand Canal? Is that the Grand Canal? Maybe. No, I, I just guess the city of the description. What do you think? You, you're going to have the best guess. I'm going to say Strasbourg in France. Strasbourg, comma, France. Did you enjoy your cat then handing you that poison chalice? You can have the first. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, no, that's not it, I'm afraid. <laughs> Data Wizards, do you know? London Bridge in London. Not it. No. Nope. The answer is Buenos Aires. It is a sequence of the birthplace of popes. Oh. Pope Francis was born in Buenos Aires. His predecessor, Benedict XVI, in Germany, in that city. Van der Witzer, that's John Paul II. And we're going back to clue one. John Paul I, born in Canale de Gordo in Italy. Papal birthplaces was that sequence. Data Wizards, what would you like? Uh, two reads, please. OK, what would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. It's like, yeah, it's not capitalised, so it's not a title case. Next, please. Hope, faith. Hope, faith. Oh, they're the virtues. So yeah. what's band and leap, then? Oh, is like, it just, it just phrases columns. that have got, yeah. that have got the virtues in? What should we have? Love, is it love and charity? I can't remember what the... I don't know. Should we go for the... Get another, uh, I think. Get one more. Keep that. Fortune. Hope. Crikey. Faith. Fortune. Fortune. What are we going to have? Yeah, you can say love. You can say... Um, uh, labour of love. Yeah. You're going to have to go. Go, go, go. Labour of love. Not it, I'm afraid. Ramblers, do you know? Picking the cup. That's not it. We are inspired by lyrics. This is lyrics of a song going backwards towards the circle of life. Oh. oh. The Elton John, Tim Rice song from The Lion King. 
and uh, just to make it extra hard, it isn't even these exact lyrics in the version mm. you hear in the film The Lion King. This oh. was the, the pop release, but going forwards, uh, it's the circle of life, it's the wheel of fortune, it's the leap of faith, it's the band of hope. I've played that in a bassoon ensemble, but <laughs> we, so we didn't have the lyrics. <laughs> well, I think if I'd gone a... honk, 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 would that be an acceptable answer? <laughs> Do you know what? Try it next time you don't know, and we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Do you fancy another question? I think we have I to. I think we're going to have to, <laughs> yeah. I mean... Here comes the Eye of Horus. What will come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next, please. Yeah, I've space. 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 Okay. Oh, it's, oh well, I've, I've better not be sport. <laughs> um, next one. Next one. Yeah, yeah, next clue, please. Two out of five Norton. Like Graham Norton? Or um, the Norton and Fellow of English Literature? Yeah. Probably not. I don't. Um, well, just two out of five are oh, nevers. It's not just that. Uh, you just want to go for the boxing thing. I have no uh, idea. Yeah. Can I I don't just say one. <sighs> one out of five. Ali. Not it, I'm afraid. Data Wizards, do you know? One out of five. Nemo. Not it, I'm afraid. You're not going to try honk, honk, honk. <laughs> that wouldn't have been it either. It is to do with the great Muhammad Ali. It is the people who defeated yeah. him. Ah. It's the first four of the five professional losses of Muhammad Ali going back towards the first person to vanquish him, Joe Frazier. Ah. Frazier was the boxer's name we were looking for. So that means, uh, in what I think is unprecedented in the history of this show, although I don't know why, nobody scored anything uh, in round two. Uh, I don't know why they ever score anything, but uh, this time they didn't. At the end of round two, the Rambers have one point, the Data Wizards have four. <laughs> Let's see if we can garner a few more points on the connecting walls. I doubt it. Ramblers, you'll be going first this time. Please choose lion or water. Could we have the water wall, please? You could. Actually, these aren't too bad. You've got two and a half minutes to solve the water wall starting now. Okay, oh, what have we got? Type A, bullet burn, lynch, bro, castle frame, I feel that. Oh, castle yeah. oh, castle. Oh, castle. Oh, castle. Oh, castle. Okay, manor is one of them. Yeah. So I'll get rid of uh, hall. Um, get rid of villa. stuff to do with um, wine at all, like vine. Okay, that's oh. a good. Uh, bullet train, freight train, gravy train. Oh yes. Yeah. I don't know what the other one is though. Is it a a wagon train? Or is it a soul no. train? Or wagon train could be a thing. Okay. Sure. okay. Oh, we got David. Right, so. so David Byrne, David Lynch. Yeah. David Soul. David, David Soul. Yeah. Guess. There's a David Villa as well as a football. Oh, ah, oh, okay. Yeah. So what's the so other one? What ones? isn't a David? Well, Taipei. Rome. I assume. Yeah. Rome. I guess. Okay. What is Taipei? Oh, what it's the it? capital of a city. Is it capital? Oh, yeah. Taipei, yeah. Rome. Rome. Oh, lovely. Seoul. 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 Burn? Burn. Yes. Yeah. And the others Little are David. Yeah. yeah. Happy I with think that? so. Yes. Let's roll. You've solved the wall. Wiping away the memories of the first half of the show. You've got an immediate four points for finding the groups. What about the connections? Manor, chateau, and so on? So these are all like grand buildings, houses. Yes. Exactly so. And the next group, gravy, freight, and so on. So they can be followed by the word train. All types of train. And the next group, type A, Rome, and so on. These are all homophones for capital cities. Exactly so. Although if I say they're homophones, people write in because in their accent they're not. But let's just say they sound a bit like okay. the capital <laughs> cities, Taipei, Rome, Bern, and Seoul. And the last group, Villa, Vine, and so on. So these are all famous Davids. They are all famous Davids. So immediately leaping from a rather worrying one point, you've got 10 for the wall, so you're on 11. Let's bring in the other team, give them the other wall, see how they get on. Data Wizards, you're getting a lion wall. You've got two and a half minutes to solve it, starting now. OK, I mean, we've got yes. Okay. Um, got, um, there, there are, like, military um, yeah, options. Rain, so strike, salty foray. Yes, yes so that's one. Okay. Um, Darlene. So Wagner and... Oh, is that the, the pop pop, pop like, thing? Um, or oh, the Prince Talent or something? The pop music thing. Um, are there, are there cups in there? There's Davis Cup. Um, yeah. Courtney Love? Davis Love? Yeah, could be. Is there another? any loves in there? Um, I can't Liz see Blacker. that, but I can try hitting some names. There you go. <laughs> okay, good. Um, I'll do. So, Class action, strikes. affirmative action, okay, yeah. so industrial I'm action yeah. and live action. So we've yes. got list for a Britain and Handel, which oh, sounds like composers. They do. Okay, so oh. should I do that? Beautiful. 
grateful. All right. You saw the wall. Does this sound like the show suddenly got easier? <laughs> it does, yeah, mercifully. Let's find out if you solved it by mistake. <laughs> Over to the first group, Sally, Raid, Strike and Sortie. Those are sort of military actions. Military ventures, exactly so. And what about the next group, starting Darlene? People called Love. They are. And remind me who Darlene Love is. No idea. The singer Darlene Love. Of course, and, yes. and your yeah. favourite Wagner Love, the... From the pop thing. Brazilian footballer, quite. Yes. <laughs> and the next group, starting List. Those are all sound-alikes for composers. You realised it when you said it out yeah. loud. What can it be? List, Britain, Handel, Foray. Mm -hmm. They sound a bit like composers. And the last group, affirmative, live, class, industrial. All types of action. They are all types of action. So four points for the groups you found, four for the connections, bonus of two, that is the maximum of ten points. Let's have a look at the scores as we go into the final round. The Ramblers have 11 points, the Data Wizards have 14. That's more like it. Good walls, both teams, well done. But now we've got to play another round, I'm afraid. It's the missing vowels round, fingers on buzzers. I can tell you that the first group of disguise clues all have locks. Data wizards. Doors. Correct. Wizards. The Panama Canal. Yes, it does. Wizards. Goldilocks. Correct. Ramblers. No. You lose a point, Wizards, do you know? Rugby union teams. Each team has two locks. Next category, they have stocks. Rounders. Warehouses. Yes, they do. Wizards. Shareholders. Correct. Rounders. Stock, Aitken and Waterman. Well done. Ramblers. Soups and stews. Yes, they do. Next category, they have barrels. Ramblers. Shotguns. Correct. Wizards. Distillers. I'll take it. Distillers or distilleries. Correct. Wizards. Fountain pens. Yes, they do. Ramblers. Donkey Kong. Of course. Next category, expressions of completeness. Data Wizards. Lock, stock and barrel. Well done. And well done, all of you, because we have crawled to the finish line. And after a much improved last couple of rounds, the Ramblers finish on 15 points. The Data Wizards have 22. Well done, Data Wizards. You are straight through to the next round. Even better done to you, because you get to have another free game <laughs> before the next round. So we'll be seeing you all later in the competition. And coming up next, in a change to the published schedule, it's a chance to see BBC Two's History of Optometry. Presented by one of the channel's biggest stars, it looks at the beginnings of the science in the 13th century, when the spectacle frames housing the glasses were often made from elm, oak or ash. That's Michael Portillo, I would, next on BBC Two.